Good afternoon. This is uh, another in the series of business partner estimating software tutorials and this one is going to be titled uh, an estimate, actually creating an estimate or proposal. So it's just going to be a, an overview of the process of how I would create an estimate or proposal uh, for a typical project. Um, the three most used buttons on the program are jobs, reports, and clients. And most of the time you'll be going to jobs but if you go to jobs and you say you want to create a new job here it's going to ask you if this is for an existing or a new client if you say it's for a new client it just kicks you out and sends you over to the client database to add this new client um, so we're going to use uh, for this illustration for the sake of time we're going to use the, the, the fastest way of, of creating an estimate by uh, using an existing but you would fill out that information about the client so we've got a new job here and we'll just call this a test project and then we'll pick a, a client and if you're looking for you see that I've got quite a few but if I type the first letter of the client's name I'll at least get in the general area of where they're at um, and then I can pick that client. Um, so in the case of this one, I uh, think I'll do use uh, Dan Willis's account. So we'll type in a D and scroll down to Dan Willis. And now we have. Um, much of the information filled in here based on his uh, client information. So if we go to terms, we see we already have terms of this particular client gets 50%, pays a 50% deposit, then a 40% is uh, payment is due upon delivery, and then 10% upon completion. Uh, we also see his markups have been copied down here where he pays uh, you know his markups are based off of 5% for our sales effort, 5% for our design and engineering fees and effort, 19% uh, overhead and 30% profit um, and then we could have an additional here but this is copied in from the clients uh, in the database and then if we had a lot number we could put that in, if we had a neighborhood we could choose that we don't we can choose not applicable it, that would be in the list um, and then we'd want to put a date uh, in the date field um, and if we're if we're doing an estimate then we would fill in that date as well then we might want to put in the or, or I always put in the ship to address um, and then the city and the state and the zip and I like to always put as many of the contact uh, phone numbers that I can come up with in here in case because the paperwork that's going to be generated by this business partner will also be available to everyone in the shop and to the installer so if anyone needs to get into a house or ask a question and, and, and someone is uh, not available at the shop possibly they could call the, the owner or the builder or, or someone from this list or even email them Then I also always do a Google uh, map find directions and then get the mileage so let's put in some, some mileage there Delivery trip quantity can be different people think differently about it. I typically do not include uh, trips to the job site uh, after the delivery. These are only delivery trips. Um, within my uh, cost structure for uh, the install, I've included trip quantities uh, within that structure. So this is typically just the truck and trailer delivering the cabinetry, uh, and I base this off of a, about a $15,000. Uh, per load or week's worth. So if there's you know anything over fifteen thousand would become two trips. Anything over thirty thousand would become three trips, and and, and so on. Um, but you can use that as you see fit. Um, so that's the first step: is that we want to get this uh, job information entered. Um, in this case, you know we're we're doing an estimate, and we have an estimate date, and we have the terms, and we confirm that the terms are correct. So now we're ready to go to the rooms area. And here we can either add all of the rooms and then go in and add the details for the rooms or we can just add one room at a time as we go. Uh, we're only going to do one room for this illustration so we'll just do that. Click add a room. Give that room a name and that can be whatever you want it to be. Um, if I have a kitchen um, 
that has an island of a different finish, then I would use the elevation. Here I would say kitchen, and then I would add another room. And, and here I would say kitchen, and in the elevation I would say island. Um, if you're doing a commercial application where you're trying to match up uh, to the elevations of the drawings, you may use whatever their numbering scheme is, or you could use something like this. But typically we only use this elevation field if we're trying to identify an area with a different finish of some sort. Otherwise, all of the kitchen would be in one room. Then we can go into that kitchen and <clears throat> either fill in all of this area. And basically what we want to do is we're starting here at the material entry at the top and we want to go to the bottom. And we do want to stay in order because once we get down to the toe board, from the toe board down, there are calculated values based off what we've entered here. So the first two areas are basically telling uh, business partner what you plan on using, what materials you plan on using for the project, and then the next four, base, upper, tall, and vanity, are telling you know the, about the cabinetry, linear footage, and the cabinet types, and then we have some accessories, um, but then from fillers, or from toe board, toe board, and hardware, and, and trim, all have something, some things that are uh, calculated based off what you've entered up here, and you'll see that as we get to that point. Um, so you always want to start at the top and work your way down. If you do delete some cabinets out of here, you want to come back and review the bottom area because that could, could have changed something. So uh, one of the really fast ways, one of the earlier uh, tutorials that we did were several of them about defaults. And one of the defaults would be a material default. Um, so here we've created a, def a, a material default group that will fill in this whole page for us. It'll actually take care of every one of those fields rather than us picking on each one and doing them one at a time. Um, and you don't have to have one that is perfect. Uh, we could choose, let's say here we want Cherry um, CRP 10 door, uh, which is a Conestoga door. Uh, cherry is the wood species and the finish is stained glaze. And it's a little bit generic in that we don't know what the stain color here um, or the glaze color is. We just know that we have you know, the, the wood species, the door style, and the finished process determined. But even from there, if that one wasn't exact, we could still come in here and say, well, actually what I want is a stain, low complexity, glazed, antique, distressed level uh, three. Uh, so that doesn't have to be perfect there. It just has to get you close so you don't have to fill in quite as much. And let's say we're using a ginger stain and a brown glaze. And once this first line for the interior parts is complete um, for this finished portion, then you can come down here and say, click on this button, and it will fill in the line for the exterior parts, and it will fill in the line here for the trim and moldings. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you can see now they say, you know, stain, low complexity glaze, antique, distress level 3, ginger, and brown. Um, all of the other fields were filled in based off us choosing this default materials and we could correct anything else. In this case I see that I still need to select the edge banding. Um, so I could come in here and if I don't have one that's exact um, I could you know leave that at need selection. Um, in this case I do have uh, ginger but I don't have ginger with brown glaze. So I want to leave that at need selection until I find an edge band to match and, and add that to the database and, and fill that in. Um, and then you, so here we're choosing our door style, and then here we're choosing the door materials, and then here we're choosing our panel profile, edge profile, and frame profile. This column right here is uh, basically the source of where these doors are coming from. What is the source? Are you going to outsource them, or are you going to make them in-house? So in this case, we're saying we're going to buy all of these doors in applied ends, but we're going to make the fillers, toe board, and face frame stock, if there is any face frame stock. Over here, this source column is based on, is determining the finish source. So where is the finish going to be done? In this case, we're going to do all the finishing in-house, but we could also choose outsource. Um, they basically, the structure of business partner allows them to calculate the cost identically if you want it to um, for any one single door or finish with the exception of how the tax is treated. And that's a long subject, so we won't go over that now, but it will treat the uh, a door purchased out as all material, which would mean all of it is taxed in a state where you tax material only. And if you were chose in-house here, then it would only tax the material cost for that door, not the labor to make that door. 
Um, but then it's very flexible in how that works and, and works with many, many states, uh, different setups. The next thing we would do after we fill this, and of course here's the drawer box uh, selections. In this case, we've chosen Zargon drawer system with a three-quarter maple melamine uh, bottom, and this is Zargon rollout tray, and then we have our crown mold, our light rail, and any of these that don't get used, I wouldn't leave them blank. I, I try not to leave any fields on this page blank. Even if I don't have any appliance panels, I still fill in what the appliance panel would be if they did choose one, because if you leave this blank, and then later come down here to the appliance panel page and add an appliance panel, it will be a zero cost because it doesn't have any material to make it from. So it's important that this page has no blank fields, that they're all filled in, even if you don't have any of that item, what would it be if you did have some of those items? And then on the detail page, it'll say there's zero of those items. So then we'd want to do the same thing for our hardware, and we can choose to select default materials or do them one at a time. Uh, since we know this is a Zargon job, I'm going to choose my Zargon uh, knob with a $5 budget. Um, and that provides a $5 budget for the knob and the $5 for the door and the $5 budget for the drawer front surface hardware. Um, but it get, if you have specific line hardwares, you can fill those in at this point. Typically when I'm doing estimates, I don't know what the surface hardware will be yet. Then in the base cabinet, this field here, uh, the unfinished interior, uh, is not necessarily meaning that it's raw, it just means you don't have to apply finishes to the product. It is either a melamine or pre-finished product or you're going to deliver it raw to the project. Something that you don't need the finished cost applied to it. Um, and then the finished interior would be any linear footage of cabinets in this room and this is a single number for all of the linear cabinet tree in this room. So let's say we have 10 feet of base cabinet that is unfinished and we'll say we just have, for the sake of time, I'm just going to say drawer repair, add those cabinets. And based off of our past experience, we have a suggested box quantity here. Now, we would never have a kitchen probably that had just five drawer repairs, but for again, for the sake of time, that's what I'm going to do. And we always default to the quantity once you add cabinets. So it's defaulted the quantity. All I got to do is type five, confirm my depth, height, toe kick height, number of fixed shelves and number of adjustable shelves and then move on. Um, we don't recommend filling in the cabinet widths as individual cabinets because that precludes you most of the time from being able to put in a quantity here and the parts are so close when you don't actually put in individual cabinet widths and it just divides the 10 by the number of boxes so all the cabinets are 24 inches wide where in re reality some of them are probably 3 foot and some of them are 18 inches or 12 inches. Um, but it really is uh, insignificant, uh, the difference. Um, so we see here that we've got five cabinets that are drawer repair doors, and it calculated those widths at 24 inches each because we have 10 feet and there's five of them. Then we would go to our upper cabinets, and let's say we have uh, eight feet of uppers that are just pair doors. Again, I'm just doing this for the sake of time. And let's say there's, uh, it's saying a suggested quantity of four, so we'll use that, assume that's right. Um, and then also, let's say we have uh, three feet of finished interior and it's uh, an open cabinet. We'll add that. Now, if for any, some reason, I, if I had not filled in that field there, but I add a cabinet with a finished interior, and you see the toggle right there, unfinished and finished, you see that it turns red and says, please enter. So, you know, a reminder to not leave that blank. Um, and also don't fill in this field, although we let you override it, that's why it has the red box around it, we allow you to override it. It is calculating this height based on you said that these cabinets are 95 inches from the floor to the top of the cabinet and 54 inches from the bottom uh, of the, to the bottom of the upper from the floor. So that's 41 inches. Again, it would be wrong to override that. You would want to change one of these two to make it right. All right, and then uh, so, so the steps here are all listed right at the top for each of these four pages to add the linear footage for the room of cabinets, select an upper cabinet type from this, um, there's number two is to select an upper cabinet type, there's number two, select that from that list. Um, the top of the list lists all the boxes as FA for full access or frameless, and then when you get to the bottom, their face frame cabinets are there. 
It's not quite as many face frame as frameless because I don't use that section myself, but um, some of them are filled in, most of them, uh, the most popular styles are. And then the, uh, click the Add Cabinet button here, and then enter a quantity in the interior choice. Um, so you would want to come in here and enter a quantity and make sure that your interior toggle is correct. Um, some of these cabinets, like this upper open cabinet, already had the interior finished, um, chosen within the database, so it didn't have to be toggled, but you can talk. I can change that one to finished right now if I want to. Um, and then once you get done there, then you would do your tall cabinets. I'm just, for this, again, for the sake of time, just going to add one cabinet. I'm saying there's two and a half feet, and it's an oven cabinet, and it's a pair of doors over a micro, over an oven, over a single drawer. We'll add that cabinet, and then again, confirm the depth height, toe kick, fixed shelves, and adjustable shelves. Um, then we would go to our, in this, this kitchen, so we wouldn't have any vanity cabinets typically, although you might have some vanity height desk cabinets, um, and you certainly add those. Then your end panels, and I'm not going to take a lot of time with these, um, but your blind panels can be here as well. Loose doors can be here, loose drawer fronts, mirror frames, things other than just doors and drawers can be added to this database. But in this case, let's just say we have a, a couple base end panels that are panelized, and we have a couple upper end panels that are panelized. Again, it defaults to the quantity, and I'm just hitting the quantity, and then I confirm my depths and heights, make sure all these are right. But again, I don't want to override these fields, although it will allow me to do that. If I come in here and change this one to five feet, you see that it turns red, telling me, hey, you overrode that. Um, and then it will recalculate um, based off of that. Um, but you can also come in and delete that and it'll put it back to what it's supposed to be. So we do allow you in any of the red fields to override them, but we don't recommend it. So after we get run with in panels, then if we had any appliance panels, we would add those. And you see there's a pretty good selection of you know appliance panels for like built-in freezer doors for the different widths of built-ins. And then the grill, the one above, and then the refrigerator doors for the different units, and then dishwashers and dish drawers and, and all that. Um, and all of this is already in the business partner when you get it. Then you have wainscot panels. So um, in this case, let's uh, assume two of those cabinets are for an island, possibly. So we'll say that we have a cabinet height panelized back. And we'll just say it's uh, you know a, a quant one panel but it's divided into two because it's five feet wide. Okay, um, and, and again, you can change any of these, but uh, most of the defaults are pretty close anyway. Of course, I had to know what the width of that island back would be. Then let's add our fill fillers, and let's just say we got a one base filler and uh, one up upper filler that's inch and a half. Right, and then the tow board, now we're going to have a calculated quantity. When I come in here and choose, and I can choose, you can put in whatever you want, but I've got four, four and a quarter, and five. So if I choose my four and a quarter inch tow board, it suggests, based on the number of linear feet of base and tall cabinets, that I need three pieces. Um, typically, I add one um, to any any of those, whatever this says, I typically add one. And if it's, you know, 10 or 12, I might even add two or three. I always want to have more toe kick than I need. I never want to run out. Um, and then face frames, you see there's all zeros here because none of these cabinets we added had a face frame. If they had had a face frame, we would actually have a square footage of frames there as well. Then your labor rates, typically you don't change these from job to job, but this does give you the ability here on the installation, if someone were going to pick their cabinets up to just zero out the installation labor, uh, and then make sure you zero out the installation labor on hardware, accessories, and trim, and you'll have a job cost without installation. If you need those numbers back, you just click on the defaults and put them back. If you've got uppers that are stacked, or you've got uppers, uh, if you've got uppers that are stacked, you probably want to leave this alone. But if you've got a, a, a tall upper that has a fixed shelf door over door, you've got a little extra labor there. You could modify this upper cabinet labor right here on the fly for this job only, uh, and that would be really handy. Uh, but to, again, typically I don't change anything here unless I'm selling to a showroom that's going to do their own install, and then I would zero out the install. Then on the hardware, we're going to calculate what's going to happen based off of what we've told it up here, 
you see all of this data right here. It's basically saying, based on what you've told us up here under base, upper, tall, and vanity, you should have six drawer fronts, six drawer box, no rollout trays, 10 doors, base doors, 10 upper doors, and a total of 20 doors. Um, and so then, then it's you know giving us our surface hardware what we're going to need down here. And then it's also calculating our legs. And if we say, well, I'll, I need five or 4.2 or what you, whatever you want it to be, you can do that. Um, you know, typically you'd have four per cabinet, but some would have six, so you might find that 4.2 gives you the right amount, something like that. Um, and then if you don't use suspension blocks, um, you wouldn't have answered that question here on the hardware entry page. You'd have left these blank, and so then it wouldn't have added anything. Um, but once we typically you just scan this real quick, there's only a couple fields you can actually enter anything, uh, but then you can just choose the add button and it actually puts all of your um, hardware for the job in for you. Now, there's still some things you may need to, you know, check. Um, you know, we've got a $5 budget for knobs um, for doors and a $5 budget for drawers. Um, and we have six of those and 20 of those. Um, but we may know that, hey, a couple of these drawers get two. They're wide drawers and they're going to get two. So instead of six, we may say, hey, we got eight of those or nine or ten whatever um, same thing may tr hold true for hinges you may have some tall doors that need three hinges we've calculated based off of two hinges per door but if you know you've got two doors that have three hinges you know you need to change that to 42 also we're we don't know about some of the accessory type items so uh, you could also do this whole process manually by coming here and choosing a category in this case I chose functional hardware um, what I don't know just from what you answered up here is that you might have a couple file drawers. Uh, so then we know we have Zargon drawers, so we can uh, scroll down to grass Zargon drawers and say, hey, look, i got some file drawers here, so uh, two of those drawers are files, so I just added that. Whatever's on this side of the screen with a green button in front of it is available to be added to the job. Whatever's on this half of the screen has been added to the job using the add button or using the green button over here. The gold button takes you to the details of that item. If you're not sure this is what you want or you've not seen enough of it to make be clear about it, this actually takes you to the details of this item, shows you everything about it, cost, everything about all the markups, everything about this item, um, and also allows you to let it show or not show on the reports by that toggle button. Once you've looked at this and know everything's like you want, then just go back to the room clicking on the room button and you're back to where you are. So these gold buttons allow you to look at the details of the items that have been added to the job. These gold buttons in this column allow you to look at the details about something you may want to add but you're not certain, you, you need a little more information, you click on that gold button. This red button lets you delete an item that's been added. Uh, and that's true in every area and there's always instructions down at the bottom of every screen telling you what those buttons are. All right, and the next section would be accessories. And I always recommend to everyone to there's four categories, and within each of these categories, there's at least one classification, but some have multiple classifications. I recommend scanning every one of these lists, you know, and making sure there's none of these things you need. So we'll just say we have uh, some a couple angled walls on this job. Now, this item right here, angled wall, labor per angle, when we go look at the details for it, because it is just a labor item, a labor upcharge, I've got it set visible on reports, no. So it won't show on our report, but it will add this $81.20 um, for a little extra material and a little extra time taken to deal with that angle in the field. Um, and you see that most of the cost is here at installation. A little bit of it is material. In my case, I, that's the cost for a transition mold, and this is the cost to cut that transmission mold to, to length and, and install it to the cabinetry for that angle. Um, so let's also we know we had one uh, uh, cabinet that had an open interior. Um, if we had chosen that door as being a pair finished interior, we might have wanted, needed to charge an upcharge for glass doors, one light, two light, four light, whatever here, or even for the glass. Um, you know, we've got uh, you know, glass listed, we've got you know, clear glass, seated glass, you can have as many as you want. In this area, because we have a material cost, an installation labor, and a shop labor, it really could be anything you want. And you can also, from hardware down, you can also, once you add an item, change the name of it. Never change the name of a cabinet in the base, upper, tall, vanity, or anything about appliances or, or panels, end panels, plants, panels, wainscot panels. 
um, or tow kick, but from hardware, accessories, and trim, you can add an item and then you could actually type over this name and it won't hurt anything to do that and then change the price of any of these items. Um, you know, a lot of times when I've done what we did on this last page of this $5 budget, once they actually decide it, if, if it's not a real popular piece of hardware that I already have in here and I don't think I'll ever have anyone else pick it, I'm not going to add it to the database. I'm just going to type over this description and put the appropriate price here and here and then I'm done um, because I probably won't ever use it again. Uh, but same thing with accessories. And you, So once you've scanned this list and scrolled to the bottom and you know you don't have any of these items, then the next thing to do would be go to the next category. Um, if you don't have any countertops, then you can skip those two categories or if you're not supplying the tops. But if you are, you would go to those two categories and look at everything in them. In this case, we'll just assume we don't have tops. So now we have a category of functional accessories, but you see we have multiple um, classifications. We want to look at each one of them possibly. Now, if this is not a closet, maybe you don't need to look at the closet. Probably wouldn't be a good, bad idea to look at doors and accessories, drawer accessories. Um, if you know you don't have a hood, then you obviously don't have a hood liner blower. Um, if you know you don't have any corners, then you wouldn't have any Lazy Susans. But it doesn't hurt to scan each one that might have something in it that you may need. So I look at this and say, well, no, nothing there. But when I get to the drawer accessory, maybe I do see something I need. Maybe they want a, a cutlery drawer and a utility drawer. Again, clicked it on the green button in front of the item to add it to the list. And then if I want to, I can change the quantity if I need to. Um, so those two items have been added. And then we have our trim items. On the trim items, we can do an auto add here. We'll get our crown and light rail based on suggested quantities. Again, based on what we've said in the in, in about applied ends and upper cabinets and tall cabinets, it's suggesting that we need, and we have 15.63 and it's saying it was 16 feet. You might say, eh, I better put in 24 feet. And you also see here that it change the suggested quantity of pieces when I said 24 feet to 3 based on what we told the linear footage was for that particular item. From here we would also add any additional moldings that we need, um, some of them being trim, some of them being molding. So here we've got clips, corbels, decorative hoods, feet, legs, just a variety of different items um, that could be added. Uh, and then our functional trim, appliance garages, mantles, plate racks, anything you want to create in here you could add to this. And then your moldings themselves, apron molds, base molds, decorative moldings, panel moldings. Uh, but once those items are added, you have a complete estimate completed. With all of these areas covered from material entry down to trim items, you're ready to do uh, an updated cost. And you can do this throughout the process if you need to check it. Um, so now we have a, a room cost. This doesn't include sales tax and delivery costs, but it uh, is a pretty accurate cost and you can test the difference between door styles. You can look at this number and then come up here and change to a different door. Um, say a 10875 miter door and drawer front. And then 84.36, update the cost. And that became now 9,008. So you can do some what if scenarios uh, here on this page. Again, you're not seeing the delivery cost, but that wouldn't change from different scenarios here. Um, so you might find that helpful to be able to do that. If you need to do a, a several competitive estimates where you are actually providing them with multiple scenarios of different doors or wood species or interior materials or drawer boxes, then the, the best way to do that would be go back to <coughs> your job entry and you, uh, it, it, here you could duplicate the room, um, but I don't recommend doing what if scenarios with duplicating the room and having both of the scenarios in a single job. I would go back to list all the rooms and then um, our job name was test and you can sort through all your job this shows all the jobs you have in there but then these are all the A's jobs that start with A and our, our started with a T and there's our test project so over to the right of that project we could click on the duplicate button and it's basically going to tell you what it's going to do and continue choose the rooms that we want to duplicate in this case we only have one And 
now that that process is complete, we would rename this particular uh, project in here in the name field. We can back out the word duplicate. It always adds the duplicate to the end of the name as a suffix. Um, and we could just say maybe this is um, the CRP20. project and then go to the rooms and in this room choose the CRP 20 door and CR we'll just let, let the drawer front be a slab again I'm typing an S to get me in the neighborhood we'll say a slab wood door front and update our cost this is because we duplicated not an accurate cost but we know that that last one was nine thousand and something and this one's eighty five thirty three so you could do several scenarios like that by duplicating the job creating a secondary job with a different name in this case we test project CRP 20 the other one was just called test project um, and so that's how the business partner works that's how quick and easy it is to do uh, an estimate or proposal um, and then from there, you can do what-if scenarios of different door styles, wood species, and finishes. Hope that was helpful, and look forward to seeing you on another uh, of these tutorial videos.